So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the update function. So the update function is an AJAX function again, so we're just going to say var xml HTTP is equal to new xml HTTP request. So the re you're probably wondering, you know, why can we use xml HTTP up here and declare it as a variable and then use the same variable down here. The reason for that is the scope, because since we declared the variable in the function, uh, its scope is limited to within that function only. So that means that this, this variable up here has no idea that this variable here exists. They're actually two separate variables. Even though they have the same name, it's because they're in two different functions. So we want to get the username again. So we say var username is equal to get cookie uh, messenger uname. Then we're going to create a, a variable called output, which is going to hold the output of all the messages. And we're going to set it equal to nothing because it's uh, it's going to be uh, appended to whenever we get the data back from the file. Uh, then we're going to run this function again. So we'll just copy it instead of pasting it or instead of doing it, making it again. Uh, let's just delete this. And down here, we're going to run this again. We're just going to run it on a different page. So we'll just copy and paste it down here. So instead of update messages.php, we're going to run it on uh, get messages.php. And we're going to pass it one parameter of username. It's going to be equal to the username variable. So we're going to create a variable called response. And we're going to set it equal to uh, response. Whoops, it's actually. Um, XML HTTP dot response text uh, dot split and we're going to split firstly on the new lines which means we'll split and we'll get individual messages so we'll get an array of our messages then we're going to click or create a new variable called RL which is going to be short for response length and it's going to be equal to response dot length which the response dot length is equal to the number of messages we retrieve from the database then we'll create another variable called item, it's going to be an empty string. And we're going to loop through uh, the response. So we're going to say var i equals zero, while i is less than rl, and we're going to say i plus plus. Then what we're going to say is if item one, actually we can't do that yet. So then what we're going to say is item is equal to response dot split and this time we're going to split on the backslash so this way uh, what the way it works is the response is an array that holds all of our messages and our uh, usernames so if we go back to this page you can see this would be um, an item in response this would be another item in response and what we're doing here in item is we're splitting on the backslash so therefore item 0 is the username and item 1 is the message so because we know that, we can say uh, if item 1 doesn't equal undefined. And the only way item 1 would equal undefined is if some way uh, a blank message managed to get into the database or whatever, something like that. So that's why this would probably never be needed, but we just did it uh, as an extra safeguard. Then what we're saying in here is if um, item 0 is equal to username. So if item zero is equal to username, that means the message was sent by the user who is logged in, which means we want to display the message as, for example, let's just put this in, let's just say hello world again. If the message was sent by the user, we want it to be blue. Uh, and then if it wasn't, we want it to be gray. So that's why we have this. And we're gonna put another else here. So that way it's this, uh, the blue messages will go here, and the grey ones will go here. So this is where the output variable comes in. We're going to say output plus equals, and we're going to append on the message. And here we're going to say output plus equals, and we're going to append on the grey message. So here we append the blue one, here we append the grey one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste this in from the source code because it's exactly the same as down here. It's mostly styling, um, so it makes no sense just to uh, explain the template. So here we uh, have pasted it in. So the only thing we've changed from this one to this one is you can see here it says messages and username. That's because we're using the uh, the local variables that we're getting from the actual script. We're not retrieving them from anywhere. 
But here what we're doing is we're saying item 1, which is going to be equal to our message, and then item 0 down here, which is going to be equal to the username of the person who sent the message. But the reason this is different is because item 1 and item 0 are both pieces of data that have been retrieved from the database. So therefore, uh, there we have our output it has been appended, but now we have to actually um, update the output on the screen. So the way we do that is we uh, are going to go uh, down here. I'm going to say uh, msg area dot inner html is equal to output. Then we're going to say msg area dot scroll top equals msg area dot scroll height. And this means that for first what we're doing is we're setting the uh, we're um, going here and we're uh, filling it up with all the messages. Then if there's any scrolling in the uh, scroll bar, it's going to automatically push the scroll bar to the bottom so that you don't have to scroll to see any messages. So we're going to uh, upload this. And what we should get is a load of blue messages returned. So if we uh, run this, we actually don't get anything because we haven't run the update function yet. Uh, so we're going to inspect element. Okay, so response to split is not a function. Okay, we have an error. So the reason we have the error is because it's not uh, response.split, it's response i.split because we're splitting uh, the item or we're splitting a specific item from the response array. We're not splitting the whole array. So we'll run this and there we go. We got all the blue messages. Uh, printed out because they've all been sent by me. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just go into the database and I'm going to change this one. So let's say it was sent by high code and change this one. Say it was sent by high code as well. So let's just uh, re refresh. You'll see we'll get gray message here. And another gray one here because they were sent by hard code instead of me so that's it for this video don't forget to like comment favorite and subscribe we have one more part left and in that part we'll be doing the updating and the retrieving new messages automatically from the database so that's it for this video don't forget to like comment favorite and subscribe and I'll see you next time